All right, so today I'm going to be talking to you guys about um, the different technology and tools that you can use to, to do some of this stuff. And one of the main things that I want to share with you is that, as you can see in the first slide, is technology is a tool, not a crutch. And what does that mean? It means basically that the technology is there to assist you in or to aid you in your idea that you already have. So if you're trying to make you know, if you're trying to take a picture of something and you go into a program and you say, okay, this program has all these filters and stuff, I'm using all these filters, uh, that is something that you need, to, you need to know how you want the project to go before you go in doing it. You don't want your technology dictating to you how something should look, okay? And there's different ways to do, to, to, to do that, and we'll talk about that, okay? Um, the other thing here is photographing artwork or photographing something that is um, a flat image or some sort of image, right? So you want to get directly, so you want to get directly above your, your work and photograph straight down, or you want to position it across from each other and, and, and photograph it straight across like that, just so you don't have any distortion. And uh, I'll show you, I have some examples of that, some slides that you'll see about that. Um, you all, you want to think about your presentation, like, you know, uh, if, if, if you're taking a picture of something, of even around the house or on the neighborhood, and you look around, and there's a bunch of trash and a trash can and stuff, if that's not part of your paint, your, your picture, your photograph, then go over there and move it, you know, if there's something in your shot that uh, is unsightly and you don't want that in there, then go over there and clean it and move it so you can get the shot that you want and that you need, okay? Uh, that's, that becomes very important. Um, so another thing is to start with a strong image, okay? And as we mentioned earlier, your technology is a tool, not a crutch, okay? So all the filters in the world will not save you from a bad image. <laughs> a, bad Im a bad image is a bad image, and you're just going to make your bad image look better, you know, or look more of a bad image um, uh, when you start adding and, and subtracting things from it. So. So, so from the very start, you want to start with an image that without any filters or without anything else added, is still a pretty strong image, okay? It's just, in the end, it's going to make your product look that much better, okay? Um, the next thing is going to be, uh, so I'm going to talk about a little bit about Instagram. And I know you guys probably know a lot about Instagram already, but there's some things to think about, okay? So we talked about filters. And, and how to use them and stuff like that. And um, uh, Instagram is very user friendly. So we have here, you have, you know, you touch your, your you have your, your photo, um, your image that you're shooting. And notice how this, even in this small example, this man is in the rule of thirds, right? And that's gonna be in the next slide. We're gonna talk about that. Uh, so you touch it once and then you have, it shows you, okay, well, you can make it black and white or you can make the contrast bigger. You can do this, or you can do that. and what happens is when that happens, they give you a default settings, right? If you touch that image, uh, the little um, icon again, then you can actually modify to what degree you want the filter to, to affect your object. So I'm saying that because just because you click on a filter, just because you click on black and white, does not mean that you have to take the first example that they give you, okay? So if, if I'm taking a photograph and I'm thinking about the mood of my photograph and I want it to look more historic or more old looking, but I don't want a straight black and white image, well, you can click on the, your, your, the black and white filter and then move the sliders to where there's a little bit of color in it still, you know? Um, and and that's, that's a good thing to do. And so after that, you have your combining filters. So um, going back to this idea, if you want an old looking picture, you have to think about, okay, what do old kind of pictures look, uh, have in common, you know, faded colors or uh, distressed um, uh, kind of look to it. So, and there's various things that you can do to create that look, okay? So you can combine the filters together. So say you have, you use a little black and white, you add a little of the, um, the little shadow area around the, the borders, the, the corners of the, each of the of the the edges to make it like dark around the edges. Um, 
you know, you, you can do many different things to kind of create that look, even though like, if, just because you don't have expensive, crazy software, like I'm a graphic designer, right? So I have Photoshop and Illustrator. So I, you know, I can do all kinds of stuff. But just because you don't have that stuff, or if you don't have that stuff, doesn't mean you still can't accomplish the same thing. You just have to think about it differently. Um, so that's what that is, okay? So keep that in mind. So the next thing here is to you know, follow the rule of thirds here. So, and I'm sure you, uh, um, uh, your previous classes has talked about that a little bit, you know, uh, the X here, you don't want to put something directly in the middle of, of your, your frame, okay? Even that, even up here, you see this. Uh, even though his he's relatively centered, going uh, um, uh, horizontally. I mean, uh, 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 yeah, horizontally. His head is still above the middle point of this of this image here. So even if you position objects in the center of something. You can still move them a little bit to the left or to the right, a little bit up, a little bit down, and they won't be directly in the middle. Okay, that's that's kind of important. So follow the rule of thirds um, regarding where what your subject is in 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 the in the image. And we just talked about the filters again, and I'm emphasizing that because people will really go crazy on the filters, and just because you have a filter does not mean you create a good image. Okay, um, just because you have just because you can do something doesn't mean you should do something. And that goes back to Alana's conversation you guys had about how you are feeling about something, all right? So if, if you have a piece that um, has a certain type of feeling, you need to think about, okay, what are the tools that are gonna help me emphasize or bring that feeling out more? My, what is my goal here? You know, uh, if you're not creating a piece that that needs to be black and white, then don't use black and white filter. I mean, that just makes that just makes sense, right? So you want to use things that's gonna uh, really affect how you want the viewer to feel or react to uh, the thing that you're doing, okay? All right, so that that's my, my first quick tips here about um, just being smart and wise and, and noticing things about uh, each image. And now I'm going to show you some, a, little, a few examples of some of my work and some other people's work of, of these things that I'm showing you, okay? So this is a mural that I did uh, on the side of a building here. And so this image, there's some filters on here, but they're not so obvious. I, I kind of have to point it out to you, okay? So in the photograph, all of this was crisp and sharp, okay? This top part here, I used a, a blur on the very top part to help emphasize, to make e the, the larger um, lettering more crisp, look, appear to be more crisp and more sharper or sharper than what it actually is, okay? Um, so you can see a little bit, um, and now that I'm pointing it out, you can probably notice it now. Oh yeah, yeah, the top is clearly blurred and the bottom is, is more crisp. And I also changed the colors a little bit. There's a small, slight little a uh, bit of um, tone, sepia tone to it to kind of fade or to have it like almost, um, I don't want to say 80s or 70s looking, but it's, it's, it's definitely tone, it, it definitely tinted a little bit to create the, the kind of feel that I wanted to have, okay? And these words just say it's Akachi, that's one of my, my artist names I use, it, it's, it's Akachi, A-K-A-C-H-I. Okay, so that's one example. Now here's another example of taking photography. So this is not a, di a digital image. This is just straight photography from my camera phone. Okay, so, and this piece is fairly large. It's a piece that I, I, I painted. Um, and I, the, the piece is, like I said, it's very large. So it's on a wooden panel. And so what I did was I went in my backyard I looked at the sun and I said, okay, let me look at the light to see how the light is shining down on this object. And I'm gonna show you why in the, in the next slide. Uh, shining down on the object uh, to see my lighting source. And so all I did was, you know, make sure there weren't any trees or, you know, with, make sure the wind's not blowing really heavily to blow debris and dirt on your, on your, on the drawing or whatever you try to, to take a photograph of. And then I just got on a chair and shot as much as I could directly down on the photo, okay? 
Um, and, and I did, I did do one or two things, which is adjust the contrast just a slight, a little bit, just to make um, it pop out just a little bit, but not a lot. Other than that, that's only, it's basically a straight photograph, okay? And, you, and remember I told you about the rule of thirds, following those rule of thirds, look at where his body is placed, right? Uh, his head, it's above the, the middle point here. And uh, even this body here is towards the center, but the main head part is farther towards the left. Uh, is nothing is directly centered, okay? So that's just one example uh, of that. Um, so another uh, reason, so both of these pieces, uh, this is also done on wooden panel, and this is another photography. Um, and as you'll see from uh, here is a shine spot where the light was hitting, okay? And the reason why it's there is because these, both of these pieces have a, a varnish on them, uh, and it, you know, it reflects light. So you have, it's really tricky to photograph stuff like that and not get like that shine to it. So here, and you actually can sort of see it a little bit right here, uh, if you look really hard. But um, this is just one of the things to be, you have to think about um, seeing the reflection of things and when you're taking pictures and, and, and stuff like that. It's just something to be thinking about. Um, again, following the rule of thirds, even this line here in this drawing, is not directly center. The center would be around this area. You know, it's just slightly above that. So um, just be thinking about all those things and, 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 and how you use your filters to um, make your piece, your, your strong image <laughs> look better, um, even better than what, it, than what it originally was, okay? Um, so in some of your pieces, even if you're not doing artwork specific, uh, sometimes your process Sometimes showing how you feel is also can be your, you're showing your process of how you do something, right? So I used to do calligraphy uh, for a little bit. And uh, this is just me showing my process of just, you know, doing calligraphy, my pens, inks, uh, you know, that kind of thing. Um, even, and you say, well, how, how can I relate to that and, and what I want to do? Well, if, if, if your experience with COVID or with, with whatever issue that you want to, to talk about, uh, if, if it has to do with time or the passing of time or, you know, you can show, okay, if, if you're, even if you're just sitting around bored, you, the way you show how, you, you know, how you're bored, you know, you can have the things that you do around you, like whether it's books or whether it's, you know, video games or phone or, you know, whatever it is, you can show those items, even though you're not using those items, you can show those items to, to demonstrate the passing of time. Like in this, in this photo here, you have all of these images of inks and brushes, and you have this book that's filled with, with, uh, with uh, doodles and sketches to kind of show you the amount of time and effort it takes to produce something, okay? So that's what that is. And I also use some filters here. So this has a older kind of look to it, right? And I desatch, I, uh, so there's two things, well, really a couple of things I did here. One is I emphasize the blacks, brought the blacks out more to create a sharper contrast. And then I added a slight, uh, I think it's called a vignette or a, uh, I, forget, I forget the name of it. But it's when you put those shadows around, remember I talked about earlier about putting shadows around the, the edges, the corners of, of the, uh, the borders around your image. I did that here. It's very, it, it's only slight. I didn't do it in a very obvious way, but I did it a little bit just to put focus or emphasis on the, the middle part uh, of the image. And so I have, you have the blacks that I brought out, right? And then I added the border, the, the darker shade around the edges. And then I uh, did some, uh, some tricks with the contrast or the, um, the, um, uh, what do you, the intensity of the colors. You see how this yellow pops out a lot more? And then you have these blues here, this blue here and this blue here, right? There's a little bit of red here, but you have this blue and this yellow. That is what's actually making the, the tones of this entire piece. And it's actually a, um, it's a triad, right? So you have a triad, which is your, your major, you know, red, blue, yellow. That's basically all the colors in this, in this image. But I put more emphasis on the blues 
and the yellows and try to keep the reds down to a minimum. Uh, so you have one red here and you have the surface of the, um, of the, of the table that it's on, okay? So some things to think about, okay? So here we also have another image here. Um, and this is just photography, straight photography again, like I did the other pieces of me and my sketchbook, focusing straight down because I'm trying to show you line quality. I'm trying to show you a sketch that I did with this pen. And so the, the image is in black and white, right? And I'm trying to really show the crispness of the, how crisp the black and white lines are. So it only makes sense to make the filter black and white, right? I want that stark difference between my lines and the paper. And even, even my pencil, the pen up here is, you know, obviously it's, it's, you know, it's in color, but so in black and white, uh, it just makes the image look much better. And then you increase the contrast a little bit to bring it out just a little bit more. Uh, and then you have, you know, this image, right? So you want, like I said, you want to start with a strong image and whatever you decide to do to it or edit to it uh, should, should emphasize what the end goal is going to be, okay? I'm not going to ever look at my filters or look at my uh, software first and, and say, oh, I can do all of this stuff and then find an image and use all that stuff on there. I'm never going to do that. I'm going to look at my image, think about what I want to do, and then look at my program and says, okay, what in this program can match what I want to do, okay? And what, how I want this picture or this, this video to look, what in here will help me do that, okay? That's the kind of mindset we need to have. And again, we have, uh, this is where you're gonna send, like I said, in the beginning, you're gonna send all your artwork and stuff when you're done to uh, Arm Armory Learning Art Center at gmail.com. Uh, no spaces. I just did that just so you guys can read it clearly. Um, it's just Armory Learning Center at gmail.com. All right. So now what we're going to do is, since I talked a lot about photography, more photography than video, I have some. Um, actually, well, I'm going to do first is I'm going to show you a few more examples, and then I'm going to show you uh, get into the video uh, part of this. Okay. So. Kehinde Wiley is a, a well-known uh, black painter, artist guy, and he recently, uh, this is his Instagram page. So you can find him on Instagram as well. Uh, K-E-H-I-N-D-E Wiley, W-I-L-E-Y. -E um, and look at some of his images. So, so even though, um, uh, let's take this um, here. So we're talking about the framing of, of your piece. And, and how you want to emphasize uh, uh, what you are doing. So he uh, he did create this sculpture. It's huge sculpture, by the way. It was in New York for a little while, but it's really huge. But if you look at this photograph, look at what's behind him, right? So you have these large buildings, but they're a little blurred out, and you don't have a. There's not super super busy going on in the background. I mean, even though you're in the city, you're going to have buildings and stuff. But they tried to pick something that that doesn't. Um, bring your attention away from the sculpture. So, and then you look at the sculpture, you look how nice and crisp and clean the sculpture looks, or the photography in it. And you have this man here and notice the rule of thirds here, right? His head is in the higher area to, to very, to emphasize how like, you know, this strong guy, this big guy, not strong, not strong as in big, but strong like as in um, confident, uh, a black guy is, is riding this horse, okay? To emphasize that. And he has other images like that as well. We have here some, some of his uh, paintings that he's done, right? Um, and there's, um, he also has this video. We're just gonna click that, we're gonna show you this here. So notice here, you have this solid background, but watch how, watch how when they, even when you're taking video, you wanna think about, okay, how am I going to approach whatever I'm going to film, all right? So I'm gonna play this, and I'm gonna kind of talk through it a little bit. You see that? So from the very beginning, he's showing you little snippets of this thing, kind of teasing you, okay, uh, about what this image is. So you see that? Um, 
So how you how you frame an image and how you how you reveal your image to your viewer is very important as well. So at the beginning of that, like I said, he was kind of teasing you at first, and then you have this slow pan out, and he shows you the full image uh, in, in, the, in the background and stuff like that. Okay, and we're, we're going to talk a little bit more about video and stuff like that, um, just so you know, uh, later on. And one important thing to know about this artist, so this is the artist that did Obama's portrait, uh, okay? Uh, his portrait in, in, in the, in, um, which is in the White House and all that. He's the artist that did that, okay? So if you want to see more of his works, he's on Instagram and, you know, all over the internet. So you can, even if you just look up, you know, Obama uh, portrait painting, you can, you'll find it, you know, uh, Hinde Wilde is his name. So anyway, that's like a nice little tidbit um, for you guys to know. Um, okay, so we're going to go on to uh, another photographer. Uh, uh, he's, this guy is a sculptor, but he's, the way he is photographing his sculptures emphasize, make his sculptures look even better than what they act, what they already are, okay? So here we have, let's do uh, like this one. So we have the sculpture of this, of this small robot. Now this robot is very small. It's not a big, it's not a huge thing. Uh, but look how he frames it. Look at, look at how he, the, the photograph, you know, he thought about the time of day, how the light affects the object that he's taking a picture of, right? And in the background, you have the faded buildings and the colors, and he places his image, you know, on the, on the right side, right, to emphasize all of these things and make his sculpture even look, look even better, okay? Um, and we have other art, uh, other pictures, that he, uh, pieces that he's done. Um, his name is uh, 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 Ian Fitchman, Ian Fitchman over here. Um, and we, we, I, we have all the links to this stuff. I believe they may have sent it to you. Um, but if not, you can always, uh, you know, ask for the armory and they, and they have the links to send this to you. And another good way of showing scale, which be here. Okay. Uh, a, a great way to show scale is by, uh, is by sh uh, giving you a reference point. In this case, it's this man's hand, right? And even just, so he could have just got this, put it on his hand and just took a picture of it any old where, but the difference between a good picture and a great picture is the details, right? So he's in his workshop or he's, he's purposefully, you know, has his dirty hands, right? Or this robot and he's purposefully in this picture, you can see his studio or his, you know, the ground and it's all like metally and roughed up and all this stuff to emphasize uh, the, the tactile quality or to emphasize like the, um, the uh, what do you call it? Um, the atmosphere that he wants to, uh, you know, this is a produced robot. It's like you're in a factory somewhere and they're mass producing all these robots. So he like, this is a, you know, very calculated. This nothing in here has happened by accident, right? He's thought about this and he's, and, and, and decided on, this is how I want to present this, okay? All right, so, and he has, he has some more in here, another using the sun here and, and the light there to emphasize, you know, what he's trying to do. Okay, um, so we're gonna go to someone else here. So this is actually a friend of mine uh, on the internet that we sort of became friends. His name is Magma Monster. And one thing I've got, I also want you, I brought him in because I want you to understand that what you do doesn't have to be complicated, okay? It doesn't have to be some grand, huge, you know, crazy thing. Even if it's something simple, even if you just took a picture of an empty glass that had some water in it or whatever in it, you can still make that look really nice if you just think about it a little bit. Think about how you're presenting something. And his guy's an artist, um, and you don't even have to be a very good artist either to have really good images. So like this, you know, look at this sketch. There's nothing super crazy fancy about this, this drawing. I mean, like, I'm pretty sure you guys could do this easy, but look at how he's presenting it, right? Look at, look at, uh, the, his his um, his um, how he's designed it and the, the the colors that he's chosen to use. You know, you have the black and white in here again to emphasize. You know, the starkness. You also have uh, uh, the rule of thirds being applied, and look how clean it is. Right. Um, even here is uh, a canvas. Okay, so here's an example of something. Remember, how I told you about getting right above it and taking a picture on it. So he has chosen purposefully 
to take it at an angle to emphasize this movement going in this direction right here. So you have this uh, sharp area here and it gradually fades away and goes back. Now you can do that, all right? But you just have to be thoughtful about it. It has to look like you did it on purpose, okay? That's the key. If you want something to do, so, if you want something to be done a certain way, it has to look like it's done at on purpose. Otherwise, it's just gonna look like a mistake. Like, oh, this person doesn't know how to take pictures. <laughs> like, it looks like, oh, this guy clearly messed up and doesn't know what they're doing, or, or woman or whoever, okay? Um, so if you look at here, you know, even look at this drawing, right? Crazy, weird, childish looking drawing, but the way it's presented, right? It looks like, you know, this guy clearly did this on purpose. This is not an accident, you know, he clearly is drawing and doing this on purpose, okay? So it doesn't really matter what you do, it's about how you do it and how you present it to the viewer, okay? Um, he has some more little doodles and sketches here. And like I said, you can always, you can find these people as well, okay? Um, so next, we have a graffiti artist. His name is Dame, D-A-I-M, that's his graffiti name. Uh, and he does a, quite a few different things. His stuff is much more complicated, but um, if we click here, we have, he's showing you a print, okay? Another way to show print, a print or a drawing or a, an image of something that you have created is to hold it, right? And it also gives a, sh a sense of scale. You see how big this thing is or how small the thing is. But he's also, even though he's holding it, he is also not distracting you from what the actual subject matter is. You know, his head isn't in there looking around and he's not like, you know, looking like, oh, you know, whatever, here's my, here's my drawing, here's my whatever. You know, you know, even his hands, even the way he's holding it is very specific. He's holding it like this in a very specific way. You know, he's got black on so that he's not wearing bright colors to, to clash with the image that he's holding up. He's, he found a white wall somewhere uh, that could be in his house, that can be in someone else's house. I mean, you don't have to do it, everything uh, at your own house. E even if you just go outside and just, you know, you, you know there's, there's walls everywhere. <laughs> you know, you can find a wall anywhere. Um, and, you know, so he has that white, he's wearing the black to not, um, you know, and he's not wearing any jewelry or his fingernails aren't crazy painted to distract you from what the, the subject is and he's just holding it so you can see it uh, and he's also making sure that the camera is directly across from the thing that he's taking a picture of you know he's not taking a picture from down here or up here or around the corner you know he wants you to see this thing so he's taking the picture directly across from it okay all right um so next we're going to go to um Here's a, another good example, and I'm going to show you this one, and then we're going to talk about some video, okay? Because I know I don't have a whole lot of time. But uh, so here you go. So here, he did the same thing, right? But notice what he is wearing, okay? Look at how the splashes on splotches on his on his uh, on his shirt, okay? Now look at the the splotches on the painting, right? That's not by accident. He did that on purpose, right? Because this painting is supposed to be more loose. And even if you look at the composition of what's what's in there, you see like this kind of explosion kind of thing that's going on uh, with, with the image here, right? And the splattering that's going on over there. And so, we, so he decides to wear a shirt that emphasizes this idea of exploding, this, this splattering that's going on in his picture, okay? So be, be thoughtful and be aware of that, okay? Uh, that's a very good example of that. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to, uh, and I know I'm kind of going kind of fast, but um, I really wanna, there's a lot to, that you can talk about and I wanna make sure that I get to everything that, that we're supposed to get to, okay? So I'm gonna show this, this, this clip. Uh, this is the video software that I found. It's a free software that you can download on your phone. It's called InShot, I-N-S-H-O-T. Um, and this man, he, I, I found a tutorial uh, for you. I figured I'll have you guys watch it because he does a better job of explaining it than I could. So 
Um, and this is another thing. Um, we're talking about using technology to your advantage, whether it's photography or film, film or whether it's poetry or whatever. You know, you guys cannot be afraid to research some of this stuff. If, if, if you, if you want to learn a certain program or if you want to learn, you know, other things or will get deeper into a program, then Google it, YouTube it. I mean, you have the internet. You can do that. You know, it's, it's, it's there, so use it. You know, there's lots of people who have de dedicated their entire lives to doing this stuff. So just go and search for them and find them and they'll tell you far more, uh, more advanced things and you'll learn a lot faster than I could ever tell you, okay? So, so do that. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna watch this video uh, and we, it's gonna go, it's about six minutes long. So, well, really five. So we're gonna go through this, okay? All right. All right, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go back a little bit here. All right. So here, I want to pause for a second. So he's talking about transitions. And I, I want you to guys, uh, that transitions in the video is extremely important. You know, it's how you get from one scene to the next. And I'm on, I'm, I, ha I have some a video of how you can use transitions or how to transition uh, in a much easier way that isn't really, really complicated. It's just, you know, thinking about how you want to go through uh, and how you want the viewer to interact with whatever you're doing. So just keep that in mind. We're gonna we're gonna go back to the transitions and how you frame your shot uh, uh, later after this. So um, excuse me, Winfred. Uh huh. Um, was there audio to this or no? Yes, you can't hear it. No, we couldn't hear it. Oh I wow. Hear it. Um, uh, hey guys, is is um is anyone else in, in there? Can you guys hear what he's saying? No, no. Wow. Okay, hold on. Give me a second here. Can you guys still hear me? Yeah. Okay. Let's yes. go. Back. Let's go back here. Wow, I didn't know that. I'm over here just thinking I'm doing such a great job. You are doing a great job. <laughs> All right, hold on here. 
going to open up our media. Can you hear it now? Can yes. All right. So what I'm going to do is I, um, I'm going to try not to talk because it's going to give some feedback. So I put my speaker up here. Okay. So I'm going to start over. Um, did, did you guys hear all what I was talking about the transitions? I heard you speak about transition, but I didn't hear him speak about transition. Okay, all right. Well, I okay. Well, we're we're just keep that in mind. And when you when he gets to the section of talking about transitions, you'll you'll know what I'm talking about. But we're we're gonna go back and talk about that anyway. So let me just go ahead and start over here. And uh, uh oh. Uh, Sorry, my uh, my thing restarted on me. Go back here. <laughs> yeah, it happens. It happens. Uh, okay. Here. Exact same experience with just a few differences here and there. Okay. I just prefer here to use go. the iPad for this tutorial. So to start, we can click the video button, and that's going to open up our media that we can import. I'm going to go down to our video editing tutorial album, and I'm going to click on these clips to add them to our timeline. Once I've selected all the clips I want, in the bottom right corner, just click the check mark. That'll load all the clips into your timeline. Now, if for some reason you forgot to add certain video clips into your project, on the far left, you'll see that red plus button. If you click that, you can add more video clips to the timeline, uh, but I've got all the video clips I need, so we can just back out there. On a quick side note, you may be wondering why on earth I'm holding a flip phone in all these videos, and that is because I actually did a video uh, where I challenged myself to try and take cinematic photos on nothing but a flip phone. So if you're interested in watching that video, I'll link it down below, but yeah, that's why I'm holding a flip phone in all of these video clips. So if you want to rearrange the clips that you have imported into your timeline, simply hold down on the timeline and they'll turn all the video clips into these boxes that you can actually scroll around and move however you want and rearrange. If you want to trim a clip, simply touch on it. And on either side of the clip, you'll see those bars. Simply grab those and drag and that'll trim the clip. You can also trim a clip by positioning it wherever you want, then clicking the split button. This will slice the clip into two different clips and then just delete the other side that you don't want. If for some reason you accidentally make a mistake and you actually didn't want to delete the clip, on the left side there is a back button where you can just click and that'll reverse the mistake that you made. Now, if we want to crop a certain clip, we can click on the video and then click Canvas. So in here we can change the ratio. So for example, if we want to upload to TikTok, we could change it to that, YouTube, Instagram, etc. But then you can also, in here, go to Zoom. You can actually zoom in and crop however you want. There's also some presets down here that you can use. Uh, it's normally for the TikTok setting, but you could do full, uh, bottom, fit, top, uh, all these different settings there. And while in this, if you go actually to background, you can actually change the background to a different color, uh, a gradient, or even a weird emoji you know, all these different patterns if you really want to add that uh, to your video. Now let's talk about transitions. In between both of these clips, you'll see there's that white button. You click that, that's going to open up transitions. You have access to quite a few different basic transitions that you can use. Uh, there's also these paid transitions down here, but hey, we're staying with free. So anything on top, the basic transitions, uh, you can add to your video. And we're just going to click check and leave it as that. If you want to add text to your video, just select the clip that you want to add text to, then tap text, and you can start adding text. Once your text is set up, you can click the color button to change the color of the text. You can also change the font to whatever you want. And then these white circles is actually transitions. So you can have different transition effects uh, for your text, and you can also uh, change here on this bar how long the effect takes to uh, happen. So this is actually really cool. I actually love that you can have all these different transitions for the text. 
Now, if you want to add music to your video, obviously just click the music button over here. You can add tracks, effects, or even record your own voiceovers. You also see on the left here the sticker icon. If you click on that, there's a few different GIFs here, uh, but you can also go over here and add photos to the video. So for example, here, I just added this photo. I can resize it, move it around wherever I want, or even click the X button and make it go away. Up next, let's take a look at adding filters. So to add a filter, just select the clip that you wanna add a filter to, and then click filters. There's a few options here. So effects is gonna give you a few different effects that you can add. Uh, there's some free stuff, but a lot of it is paid. Uh, so we're not gonna look at that. And then there's also the main filter area where you can just apply these different effects to your video. And then there's also, when you do that, you can determine how strong that filter is. You can- Remember we were talking about that? Right. Then if you hop over to adjust, you can really mess with it. So you can change the lightness, the contrast, warmth. You really have a lot of control over your video. And this is something a lot of video editors don't have. Now, something else I wanna mention, which is the same with a lot of the things here, you'll notice these two check marks on the far left side here. This means you can apply this effect to all the videos. So let's click that, apply to all. And now that color grading effect is applied to all the videos. So instead of having to click on every single video, you can click on those double check marks and it'll apply that effect to everything, which will save you more time. Other than that, everything else is pretty self-explanatory. Delete will delete your clip. Volume's gonna control your volume. Speed controls speed, duplicate, rotate, flip. You know, all those settings are pretty self-explanatory, so I'm not gonna show you those. And that covers our tutorial of the InShot video editor. Thanks for watching. Please give it a like if you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. All right. All right. So we have that. Um, welcome to. No, we don't welcome. <laughs> All right. So, so we talked about that, and and uh, you notice what he said about using the 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 range of effects that you have. Uh, you can alter it and change how much you want, uh, how much filters you want. Okay. So. Um, it, it, I know he kind of went through a lot. We're going through a lot of stuff right now, but like I said, you can always go back and find this, those videos. All you have to do is just go on YouTube and search in shot, I N S H O T, uh, for that, for that, um, for, for tutorials and videos on how to use the software. You know, it's, it's really that easy. Um, so you can do that. And so right now, what we're going to talk about is, like I said, on the more video aspect of different ways you can shoot the video um, and, and how you interpret your videos. Um, some videos can be expressive uh, and be um, not as, be more artistic in nature, and some can be more um, obvious or more straightforward. And this is a more like kind of an artsy, artistic kind of approach to film and video where it's, it's, it's trying to express a feeling to you. It's not necessarily, hey, this is what this movie, this, 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 this is about. It's more like, this is how I want you to feel about whatever it is that I am shooting, okay? So I'm gonna play this, I'm gonna play, play a little bit of this because this is kind of long, but. Um, Right. So, so you feel that like there's a lot of tension in there. There's a lot of like uneasiness in there. Uh, just the type of shots that he chose, you know, kind of dark and like moody kind of kind of stuff. Um, so that's all that's also that's also um, an option um, for you. I'm trying to exit this. There we go. 
um, okay? So that's always something that you guys, um, you guys can do. It, whatever you do, it doesn't have to be, as long as you have, understand why you're doing it, as long as you can explain, you know, your purpose for creating whatever you create, it's really up to you, right? It's really up to you. So we're gonna do another, um, here's, um, this is actually my cousin. He does, he actually has a uh, production kind of company. He lives in Georgia and he does a lot of cool things with just video and we're talking about simplicity. So even if you don't have all this amazing gear and film and lights and all this stuff, you don't really need all of that to create good video, okay? You just have to understand what you're doing and how you're going to pull it off, okay? So this is my cousin in his backyard with one camera, okay, and just filming. And look how nice it looks, okay? Makes the rules, and my girl, she don't drag her best trips off the chain. It slides between the cheeks and beeps, all the same. You can call her by her name, Visa, MasterCard. I was late on my last payment, so now I'm praying to God. It went through another day in the clear, just to work, sleep, and come back here. The rules have changed. That mule just ain't the same. 40 acres of grass to cut, ain't playing that game. <laughs> this real life will make you go insane. Hands in your heart to the American dream. A's and B's, not D's and C's. Pay attention, remember, it's the American dream. Okay, all right, so, and that's just him on a camera, on a tripod in his backyard, you know, rapping his song. Yeah, he, he's a musician too, he makes music and stuff. He wrote all that music and played all the instruments and recorded everything, like he does everything. So anyway, that and that's just one part of it. Um, another guy, um, he's a little bit more professional. He's, you know, he does this for a living. One thing that, I, and we're talking about transitions as well. If you saw his transitions, he was cutting from scene to scene and leading you on a story, on a journey. Uh, and that's what film really is. It's, it's, you're, you're telling a story. Don't forget that. Um, or even with your whatever art or whatever you choose to do, uh, your storytelling. So think about how your story is projecting to your viewer, okay? So, and I'm showing you this guy and I'm gonna skip along a little bit and I'm, I'm kind of running out of time here. So we're, I'm gonna skip along a little bit, but I'm showing you this guy to show you that he, do, he purposefully does not use transitions, a lot of transitions in his filming. A lot of what he does is one take, one shot, and he'll pan the camera around to certain angles or views and, and that's it. And everyone, everything in the video is choreographed or organized to fit the camera that's moving around and it most of the time this is like one or two shots and that's it okay uh, his name is to toby uh i don't know how to pronounce his last name toby n w i g w e i think he's from like nigeria or someplace i i don't really know but um i, I don't know how to pronounce his last name but this 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 guy okay so i'm gonna play this Staring out windows, watching my breath fall. Before I was on point with knuckles like that hedgehog, Sonic. Used to pump chronic and sip the tonic. In the state of a blue planet, when it gets worse than that bonnet. Play, especially if you stay over there off on par. When the whole jet puts that laughter, cut up a porn star. He also uses dancers a lot as well. And she's one of the dancers. He has a whole dance team. See that? You see that? He's using the shirt to transition. Her shirt and the, the camera turns around. And now they're about to shift. She left. And when they zoom out, they change the scene. You see that? All right. So this, so he does a lot of create creative things with. Um, uh, he does a lot of creative things with how you how you shoot your video. All right, and that's kind of it for. I'm going to talk about that. Um,
because, you know, like I say, it's up to you how you want to do it. Just because you don't have a lot of fancy gear or whatever. I mean, even if you do, doesn't mean that, oh, I can't make good videos. You, it's up to you, okay? If you can figure out how to be creative and you can figure out, okay, this is how I want to do this and this way this is going to look, um, it doesn't matter what you use, it's about how you use what you have, okay? Um, I think I'm pretty much done. Um, if anyone has any questions, I know it's kind of going a little bit, I may have been going kind of fast there, but um, it's, a, it's really a lot to talk about. Um, so if you guys have any questions or anything for me or, or anything that you've seen um, or even just uh, the links, uh, like I said, you can always ask the Armory for the links that I've, anything that I've shown you, I've sent it to them. Uh, you guys can also have an email about it, uh, I believe. So, um, so yeah, um, I guess we're done. If, if, if anyone has any uh, questions or anything. So which one better, like doing it on camera or doing it on your cell phone? So the thing is this, you have a camera on your cell phone, no? Yes. All right, right. So we use that, you know? Uh, your, your cell phones these days have pretty good cameras on them. And so like, like um, that video programming I was telling you about, all that is through your cell, everything that I've shown you is through your cell phone. You don't have to have any crazy other software or what, I mean, if you do have stuff, you know, nice stuff already, then fine, use it if you want to. But everything that I've showed you, if you have a phone, you can do everything that I've just showed you. Okay. Um, it, it's really up to you. Um, yeah, you just download, you just download the software on your phone that uh, InShot uh, video software, you just download, it's free. You just download off your phone. You know, you go shoot some videos and you can edit it. And there you go. Artcenter at gmail.com. And you don't use any spaces. I just put the spaces in there so you could, you know, read it clearly. Uh, just Armory Learning Art Center at gmail.com. Um, that's where you're going to send your work. And it's going to be five photos or one two minute video. Okay. Or you could do both if you if you want to, if you really want to, but you don't have to do both, but you can if you want. Uh, or you could, you know, do either or. So all right. So that's probably, that's probably it. Jackson again. And Ms. Patterson. Okay. Okay. All right. So my name is Winfred Hawkins and I'm an artist slash designer and I'm going to be going over some technology stuffs with you guys to help you on your projects. Okay. Um, so as you can see in this first slide we have up here, it says technology is not a crutch. Uh, it's not a tool. Uh, technology is a tool, <laughs> not a crutch. Okay. And what I mean by that is um, technology is here to assist you and and what you want to create, okay? It is there to make you, to help you execute your ideas. It is not there to create your ideas, okay? Um, so whatever you do, just be thoughtful, um, know what you want to do, and use the software to uh, produce what you want to do, okay? So don't let, don't go crazy with the filters if you don't have to. Don't go crazy with the editing if you don't have to. If that's not what you want to do, then don't do it, okay? If, if you do see something in, in a piece of software that helps you to, uh, uh, that, that really emphasizes your message or really helps you convey whatever you're trying to convey, then do that, okay? That's the best, that's the main, one of the main things I want to show you or get you to understand with, with these programs and stuff like that. Um, you drive the decision making, not the program, okay? Uh, so here we're gonna talk about photographing artwork and um, uh, there, I'm gonna have some examples of that, uh, but one main important thing is to get directly above or across from your artwork, okay? So if I have my camera, right? You want to get directly above it and shoot downward like that, right? Right down so that it's clear and straight, make sure it's not like wobbly or off or weird, you know, get right above it and shoot it. Right? As if you're, if that's what you're trying to do, okay? 
Or what you can also do is get directly across from it. So if I have my artwork is here, I'm shooting across here and make sure it's not tilted or turned or weird, but just like get it, frame it nicely and take a picture of it. And I'll show you um, some examples of that. Um, next, you want to is do is always start with a strong image, okay? Technology is here to help you, but it will not save your bad image, okay? It will not save bad, a work that is not very good, okay? It's just gonna expose how not good your work is. So whatever you do, make sure you try to start with a strong concept and a strong image as much as possible, okay? Um, that's, that's always a good thing to do because if you start with a strong image, you're gonna end with an even stronger image, okay? If you start with a weak image, you may end up with a maybe mediocre image, okay? <laughs> If, if, you, if you're really pushing it. Um, okay, so one, one program um, that I'm gonna talk, there's two programs that I'm gonna be talking to you about. One, you probably already know, Instagram, obviously. The other one is called InTouch, and that's a video program, okay? So in, photo, in, in um, Instagram, however, you know, a lot of people say, oh, look, I have this, I have this, uh, this filter, I'm gonna press the button, and I'm just gonna add this filter for this, this, and this. And there's two things I want you to understand. Yes, you, 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 you do the one touch and you get access to your filters. But what happens is oftentimes people forget that if you touch that filter again, you get a sliding bar, which gives you the option to show you how much of that effect you want to have on something. So say for instance, if I have a, an image that I want to be black and white, or say if I, if I have an image I want to make look old, and I look at my filters, I say, okay, what can I use here that will help me make this thing look like it's old? Oh, well, black and white. Okay, well, what if, what if I want it to look like there's a little bit of color in there? Then you go to the black and white filter, you click it, you click it again, and you use the sliding bar to adjust the degree to which it is black and white, okay? Those are decisions that you need to, to understand how to make, because again, we're trying to produce your idea. We're not we're not letting the, the technology dictate to us what is possible for us to do. We are finding ways to produce what we want, okay? Uh, the other thing is combining filters. So you, you can use more than one filter at a time, okay? And each of those filters has sliding bars and options uh, to get you to, to, to the desired effect that you want, okay? So learning how to combine certain filters to produce certain things uh, is very important. And we're, here, I'm gonna show you some examples of that. Next thing is also remember is follow the rule of thirds, right? So you don't want to put things directly in the center of your of your um, of your uh, shot of your frame or whatever you're doing, okay? Even up here, even in this slide up here, right? The person is not directly centered in the in the image, okay? He's slightly to the right, okay? And and slightly, you know, his his uh, shoulders are slightly below the middle part of the of the square here. And I've also used this the orange device, this orange block here, to emphasize more um, uh, to frame the shot better, right? Uh, to give you that sense of of this is a uh, it's not direct, completely symmetrical, okay? Um, and again, with the filters, just because you can doesn't mean you should, right? So always remember, or always ask yourself, how does this filter, filter affect my message? What I'm trying to say. If I'm trying to make, a, a, if I'm trying to take a picture of an old timey car, I'm not gonna put cartoon graphics on it or like, you know, animations and weird stuff all over it. You know, like I'm not gonna, well, I mean, I guess it could depend upon how you do it too, you know, so, uh, whatever you use, you need to be asking yourself, how does this affect what I'm trying to say? How does this appear, you know, how does this make sense with, sense with the content that I'm trying to create, okay? So here we have a, a, a painting that I did. This is a photography, okay? So I did this mural a while ago, um, and it's, it's, I, um, it says Akachi, A-K-A-C-H-I, and uh, it's on the side of a building. And from the onset, you can't pro you probably can't really tell what I did to it, all right? And, that, and that's very purposeful, okay? So if you look here at the top here, 
you'll notice, oh, that's slightly blurred. The original image was not blurred like that. Okay, you can do that with with a really nice camera, but I didn't have a really nice camera at the time. I just had my cell phone. I mean, my cell phone has a nice camera in it, but it's not like you know crazy professional grade you know camera. So what I did was I I created that look myself. I said, okay, uh, in order to make these lines look sharper, even more crisp than what they are, I need to show something that's out of focus. Okay, so what I did was I took the background and I blurred just that top part of it, right? So doing that, if you look down further, it makes it look it makes the lines look even sharper and crisper because you have a reference point, right? You can say, because this is blurry, this down here is even that much more sharp and more clear. And I also added a little a grade effect, a tint effect on the coloring, just a little bit to make it look a little bit, uh, um, age, not aged, but, uh, uh, the tone is just uh, the coloration of it just makes it the 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 reds kind of a slightly more pink kind of color um to get that sense of age and time okay um the next picture here this is a photograph okay this is not a digital digital image all of this was drawn and painted by me it's a photograph of on a wooden of a wooden panel the wooden panel is actually really really big okay and so the next thing to do, I'm showing this because it shows you about how um, the importance of lining up whatever it is that you're going to take a picture of, you know. This would look very weird if I took a picture of it's tilted or turned or not in the right, in right, in the, in the, in the right way. So all I did was I took note of, okay, what time of day do I want to take this picture? Because that's also very important because, because it's a very large piece. I had to go outside. I went in my backyard. I looked up and saw where all the trees and stuff were, so there's no overcast shadows or anything on over the picture. You know, move all the debris or insects or flies or ants or whatever that's around you. Make sure that's clean. And then I got a chair and I stood directly above it and took a picture going downward like that. And then uh, after the fact, I add a little bit of contrast to it and clean it up just a little bit. But for the most part, that is just a straight photograph from my camera, from my phone, my camera phone, and that I, you know, and then put it into Instagram, okay? So just because you don't have crazy so uh, gear and software doesn't mean you can't produce work that doesn't look very professional and clean and nice and neat, okay? Um, so here, I did the same thing. And I'm showing you, even though I did the same thing, I'm showing you this slide for two reasons. Uh, one is because you have to think about how light affects your object, okay? So both of these pieces, I um, put a finish, a shiny finish on the top of it to seal it, okay? And up here in the top, uh, top right corner of this image, you can see a little bit of the glare from that shiny layer that's on top of it. And I tried my best to get rid of it as much as possible, but sometimes you can't avoid it, okay? Um, and that's that's one of the things with take, you know taking uh, photographs and stuff like that you have to be aware of okay how can I minimize you know the potential problems as much as possible I couldn't get rid of it completely but I got rid of it, a lot of it so here there's a little bit up in this top corner up here um, and even in the previous image you can see on this chest area there's a slight I mean you have to look at it really really close to, in order to tell but there's a slight glare here that you can, uh, um, that you can see. Um, but to the best of my ability, you try to hide that as much as possible. That is, if you're trying to show artwork, okay? You may not be trying to show artwork. You, I mean, you know, but if you are, that's something to, to keep in mind, okay? Next, we have, this is more so about process than it actually is about the photography, okay? So there's a couple of things, there's a couple of things that's going on in this image, right? One is, I, you know, I used to do calligraphy for a little while, um, so... And this, I'm trying to show you the work that goes into creating calligraphy. I'm showing you, these are my materials. Here's my sketchbook. Here are my, my, my utensils that I'm using, you know, and, I'm, and you have the repetition of these letters, the, the practice that goes into it, right? So you get this idea of, oh, this guy, you know, it's not like I'm just gonna just jump on here real quick and just do this real quick. It's like, oh, this guy takes the time to go in and practice and hone his skills to, to try to do this, okay? That's what I'm showing you. And if and, and throughout your experience with COVID or with 
whatever uh, situation you're going through, you may want to show the passing of time. And how do you show the passing of time or the work that goes into that can be how you show an image. Like this image isn't necessarily about the artwork. It has art in it, but it's not really about the artwork. It's more about the process, me showing you the process of how I create these things and how much time it takes to create these things. Um, so if you're, if you're experienced throughout all this and not going to school or whatever, is that you're extremely bored, right? If you want to show that, then show all the things that you do. Like, okay, I read, I read all these books. You can put like, you know, 20 books up, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean you read all those books. It's just, you're trying to show, Hey, you know, with all this time I have, I could have read, or I have read all these things, you know, you want to take something that's innately time consuming and scale it up to show that, oh, the, you know, throughout all of this, I have done all of these things and it's taken this long to do this thing. It doesn't have to be books. It could be anything really. It could be video games. Or it could, you know, you could have 10 video games that you got all the way up to hundred percent with, which takes a lot of time. You could do, you know, you can show a calendar with, you know, X out all the days on it, or you can, you know, it's really, you can be creative however you need to be. The other thing I want to show you is, um, the other thing I want to show you is the color in here. I know you guys talked about color in the previous uh, uh, workshops that you were in. So this is a piece that is a triad, okay? And what is a triad? Remember, it's, you know, um, it's on the color wheel, it's the triangle, right? It's a triangle. So any any color on the color wheel that you, you turn, it makes a triangle, right? So you have your yellow, your blue, and the reds. And that is all of the, the color is on here is either yellow, blue, or red for the most part, okay? And what I did was here, we have this contrast of this, I, I add a slight yellow tint to it because I want it to be more yellow. And I increased the, the blacks to create more contrast, more aged kind of contrasted look with the blacks. And then I uh, changed the saturation with the colors a little bit. So you have this, this play of this yellow area and this blue area where this, the pen is blue and this little uh, top to the pen is blue. And then you have this one red uh, ink thing and the table is a slight reddish tone. So you have red, yellows, and blues with the emphasis on the yellow and the blue, okay? And also remember your rule of thirds in here, as you can see, um, so it's very important, okay? So next thing we're going to is talk about, okay, so what we talked about how filters can emphasize uh, your idea, okay? So this is another drawing that I did, and I did it in a sketchbook. It's with a pen and it's black and white, all right? And so in order to emphasize the or try to make it uh, as clean as possible, what did I do? I said, okay, well, if this is about a black and white image and I'm trying to make my, the, the focal point is the lines. So I know I'll just use a black and white filter, make that black and white, change the contrast just a little bit so that you get that stark white and the stark black um, and to create you know, the contrast in the image to really put emphasis on the lines and the line quality and the design of this. Uh, another good trick to do is also show scale by adding, introducing an object in with the picture, right? So in this case, I used my pen. This, but it's not it's just not any random object. You know, this is also the pen that I used to create this, okay? So you have the pen, it shows you the scale, that's how big it is. And you also have the black and white, which shows you, you know, gives you that contrast and it makes it more crisp uh, looking, okay? And again, well, we go back here to show, you know, this is, remember, this is the website that you, uh, the email to send all of your work to, you know, Armory um, Learning Arts Center, gmail.com, okay? So now I'm going to show you some more examples of some things, and we're also going to talk about some video, uh, but, um, so we're going to go into that now. And if you have any questions, don't, you know, don't be, uh, don't be afraid to let me know, okay? All right, so Kehinde Wiley uh, is an artist, uh, famous artist. He is also uh, the one that uh, painted um, Obama's portrait, uh, a presidential portrait. Uh, it's K-E-H-I-N-D-E -E, uh, Wiley, W-I-L-E-Y. Okay, this is his name. Um, and he he's known for doing these grand pictures of, of Black people. Um, this is one of, this is what his portrait looks like. You know, there's a Michelle Obama there. Um, and you can just Google it, search it, you know, you'll and you'll you'll find it. Okay. 
So he does uh, many different things. Uh, one thing that I particularly want to show you is not necessarily his paintings, because we kind of talked about painting a little bit, but I want to show you what he did with the sculpture, because he also has done some sculptures. This was in New York. It was a larger image. Um, but the, the one thing I want to, to emphasize here is, one, look at the rule of thirds. Look at how he's organized this, this picture. And also look at the background. Even though he's in the middle of the city, he's trying to make it as the less uh, busy as possible because that's going to take away from the actual sculpture that he's trying to get you to see. Okay, so you have this black man riding uh, this horse, looking like very strong and prominent. Off to the left side, you have the horse over here, and then the background. Notice how that the buildings are a little bit blurred out, right? And he tried as much as possible to get you know to make it less busy so you can put your eyes focus in on the man that's in, that's in here. And I'm gonna show you, he has one video and I'm gonna show you a video of this and I'm gonna, uh, I'm, I'm gonna stop it from time to time to show you some few things, uh, but um, here we go here. So even from the start, you see how he's framed this piece, right? So he's on, on the far left, he's, they've chosen a solid, more solid background and you're, they're going to tease you kind of in the bit about this. And I'm going to play this now so you can see. Um, wait, hold on. Let me get this uh, music here. All right. So notice a few things what he did there. Uh, one was the lead in. So we're, we're going to talk about film at some point. So this is why I'm bringing this up. So how he changed from one scene to the next and how he didn't reveal the subject matter immediately up front. You, I mean, you have the image that shows you what it is, but even in the video, he kind of teases you a little bit. He shows a little bit of the front, a little bit of the back, uh, a little bit of the middle part area. And then he slowly zooms out and then shows you the full, the full thing. And then you have the, the solid background to, to make it look nice and clean, okay? So you want to think about just, be, you know, when you're taking your video, how, because you're telling a story, right? Uh, even, even with photography or even with a static image, you're still telling a story. And you want to, to give us, the viewer, the opportunity to, to buy into that story, okay? So that's, that's something to always be thinking about. Um, we have this. Uh, person who is on uh, Instagram is Ian Fitchman, Ian Fitchman, F-I-C-H-M-A-N. Uh, he does sculptures. And one thing to think about here is, um, again, be conscious and aware of what you're doing and how you present yourself and how you use filters and other options to accentuate what your, your subject is. So for this, right, you have, a, uh, the, and these sculptures you can tell are not very big. They're probably like, what, that big maybe. Um, they're, they're small sculptures. But what he did here is to make it look larger, he took the picture from a little bit below, going upward a, a slightly. He also thought about the time of day and how the light would affect his object, right? So you have the clouds in the background, you have the light affecting the, the metal, and then you have this blurred out image of the, of the city behind it, right? So it makes it look kind of larger than what it is and it's more dramatic and dynamic than what it is. Um, you also want to think about your environment, right? So here, he could have just taken a, a regular picture of this, this hand here, but uh, to, to emphasize this industrial kind of look, this manufacturer type, hey, we're building all these robots, you know, kind of idea. He said, okay, I'm gonna take this picture, but I'm also gonna show you scale as well. I'm gonna use my hand and I'm gonna put the little hand in there to show you scale. But even beyond that, I'm gonna show you, give this idea of industrialness by, you know, it's not a clean hand, right? It's a dirty hand and it's very, it's purposeful. And the way it's placed in the scene shows that, like, hey, I'm thinking about to, to, to emphasize this look. Uh, it also, I'm gonna show you parts of my workshop, right? So uh, you look down, you see all these pieces of metal and, and roughed up stuff in behind him. And it further gives that contrast of you're in, you're in some type of, this man may not even be in the studio. For all we know, he could be in his backyard somewhere, but we don't know that because he's cropped it out. He could have set this up in his living room for all we know, okay? 
So all, but he's just framed this in such a way that it makes us think that, oh, this man is in a, uh, in a, in a factory somewhere holding this thing and taking this picture. He could be anywhere. We don't know where he is, you know, but that's the way he's presented it, okay? Um, and he has more of these objects here and also using the sun and the, the atmosphere to give emphasis on uh, this, this, this sculpture that he's made here, okay? So, um, and like I said, I, I'll have, we have the links, we'll have the links, uh, we've shared that with the armory and you can always get these links if you wanna refer back to them if you can, we'll send them to you. Okay, uh, the other thing I want to show you is that everything that you do doesn't have to be complicated and crazy, you know, you don't have to be an artist to produce something good. You just have to be thoughtful, okay? Um, even let's take this image, right? It's, there's nothing super, super difficult about this image. I bet any one of you can sit here and draw this if you wanted to, but how it's presented makes it look like it's more professional than what it actually is, right? So you have the black and white filter on there. You have just the contrast on there. Uh, you have a close-up of, of the image, okay? Uh, and it's put to put emphasis on there. And it's, you know, it's very clean and very precise, right? Um, we also, even with this image here, right? It's a childlike looking, you know, uh, kid kind of drawing. Even this, we know that it's done on purpose. It's purposeful, okay? So even if it is something as simple as this, if, it does, if you don't present it in a way that lets a viewer know, hey, I did this on purpose, this is it for a reason, it's gonna look like a mistake. You, know, you don't gather from this that, oh, this man doesn't know how to draw, you know, he doesn't know. It's like, no, I know what I'm doing. I'm showing you this on purpose for a reason, okay? So it doesn't have to be something crazy, crazy good. It just has to be mindful and thoughtful, okay? Uh, we also have this image. So this is a, a, another example, a different example of what I was showing you about before of getting directly above or across from your image. He's also done this on a uh, very personal sh showing you an angle, one, to show you the texture of the canvas that, that he was in and also a bit of the perspective going this way, right? And it fades off to give more of the design as a design choice. So even if you choose to do a photograph this way, you know, you fill, filling the screen with it and framing it in such a way that it looks purposeful and like you put some thought into it uh, is very, is very important. Okay. Um, so next we have Dame, D-A-I-M. That's his, he's, he's, he's a guy who does graffiti. Uh, this is his real name, Mark, uh, Marco Roser, whatever. I think he's from Germany or someplace. But uh, his, his, his street name is called Dame, D-A-I-M. Uh, he does really good graffiti. And I'm showing you this because for two reasons, there's two pieces I wanna show you here. And you can look through his Instagram stuff later. I mean, he does really wonderful work. But uh, another way to present things, right? So this, so again, focusing on the cleanliness and the purposefulness. So you look at the background, what's in the background? It's a white wall, you know? Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be white, but in this case, it is white. Um, and it, this could be anywhere. This doesn't even have to be his house. It could be the neighbor's house. It could be on a building somewhere. It could be wherever. Uh, I don't know where it is. I don't know that he lives there or not. That could be anywhere, uh, but it doesn't matter because the way he's framed it. And also look at his hands, how he's holding it, right? He's not just like randomly like grabbing it or clutching it. He's holding it in a very specific way, uh, very gently to show you uh, to, and put emphasis on the piece. And also look at um, his clothes, like what's he, what he's wearing. He's not wearing something that clashes with the image that he's trying to present you with, okay? Um, so those are things to be thinking about. Now, there's gonna be a deception. I'm gonna show you here this piece, right? So he did the same thing, but look at his clothes now, okay? Now, think about what I just told you about how he's not trying to distract from the piece, right? He's only trying to emphasize uh, or bring more enlightenment to the piece. Now look at the painting that he's actually drawn here or painted here. So we have this idea of explosions, right? This idea of things coming apart and, you know, like a splatter or whatever. And look at in the picture, you see these splatters, right? So now you look at his shirt and his shirt has what? Has splatters on them. Why? Because that is the concept of this piece. That is what this is about. So he's trying to emphasize that even more 
by adding that small little bit to that, okay? Um, and again, the white backgrounds, the hands, and his face, you know, his face isn't peeking up above it. You know, you don't see weird stuff in the background that's deter, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, distracting you. So if you're taking a picture and you're trying to show, hey, I, during this time, I went to the park a lot and I love sitting in the park. And then you go to the park and, and, and someone has littered some uh, trash everywhere, okay? Don't just sit there and take that picture, right? If that's not what you remember about going to the park, don't let that stuff be in your picture, right? So just go, pick it up, throw it away, frame your shot, make sure everything is clean or the way you need to be, and then take your picture, okay? Uh, so, um, so next, so that's him. Um, and he has various, uh, lots of other works and things that he's done. So next, we're going to start talking about some video here. Um, and one of these videos, okay, we're going to talk about this video here. And so there's multiple ways to do videos. Uh, one of them is you don't have to be as obvious with your videos if you don't want to be, right? It depends on what you're trying to express. If you're trying to express a mood or a feeling that you don't have any words for, then don't use words. Just show pictures. It try to show people what you are feeling, rather tell them what they are feeling, okay? So this is a video I'm gonna show you guys uh, and dealing with this idea of angst or uneasiness. And we're gonna look at how they've decided to, to show and express that, okay? So I'm gonna play this for you. I'm gonna play this for you. So you see that what they did there, even with like uh, the very slow kind of panning and gradually getting closer and, and the type of shots that he used with a lot of shadow and contrast and kind of almost like a horror movie kind of a feel to it, right? Um, so whatever you choose to do, it doesn't have to be an obvious, you know, oh, I'm writing a poem about this or, oh, I'm showing a, a painting about this or, oh, I'm doing, you know, it doesn't have to be any of that. It's how you feel is the way you feel. And so if how you express that is up to you, okay? Um, so that's one option. And also if you look at the transitions uh, between each shot, how, remember you're telling a story, right? So how you transition from one scene to the next and also what is in that next scene. So if I show a picture of a car, then the next scene I have a show a picture of a street and next thing I have another, a picture of a garage. Well, all of those things, have something to do with transportation. It has something to do with that car. What? Cars drive on streets. They also park in garages, right? All those things belong together. They're, you know, they, they fit each other. Um, another video here I'm showing you because, um, like I said, uh, you don't have to have crazy expensive, you know, technology and all this stuff. And er everything that I'm showing you, you can do on your phone, okay? It's not like you have to go out and have, and oh, I can't do that because I don't have this crazy camera or this software. It's not like that, okay? Uh, all this stuff that you can do, you can do on your phone, okay? Um, so this is actually my cousin that I'm about to show you. Uh, and the reason why I'm showing you this is because he's in his backyard with one camera uh, uh, doing this, this song that he made, okay? He, uh, he, he writes, he has this production studio that he uses, uh, that, he, that, he, that he owns, but, uh, you know, he does the music. He's also a musician. He plays all the music, records everything, does all this stuff. But look how simple the concept is with this, with this, uh, this, this film here. Okay, so I'm gonna play this. I'm gonna play this now. Okay. 
You can earn these keys for a monthly fee. 40 years of interest, the American dream. A's and B's, not these or C's. Pay attention, remember, it's the American dream. You can own these keys for a monthly fee. 40 years of interest, the American dream. Makes the rules, and my girl, she don't drown. That strips off the chain. It slides between the cheeks and deeps. All the same, you can call her by her name. Visa, MasterCard. I was under my last payment, so now I'm praying to God. It went through another day in the clear. Just to work, sleep, and come back here. The rules have changed. That mule just ain't the same. 40 acres of grass to cut, ain't playing that game. <laughs> this real life will make you go insane. Hands in your heart for the American dream. Okay, so we see that, you know, and those are very simple shots. That's something that you can totally do yourself if you wanted to. It's nothing super fancy and extreme or anything like that. Um, and that, that and that's one thing I want to give to you is if your concept is strong and your idea is strong, if you thought about, okay, this is how I want to present this, you don't have to have a lot of bells and whistles and all the all this stuff. All you have to do is know how to execute it in a, in a professional, clear, clean way, okay? Um, and that leads us to uh, Toby, uh, Toby uh, Nuigi, I think that's how you pronounce his last I, I don't know how really I pronounce his last name, but uh, he is um, kind of like an up and coming slash kind of famous rapper uh, that he goes. And one thing that I like about his music videos is that a lot of times, it's usually just one shot the entire the entire time. And he'll take the camera and he'll pan it around and do some things and, and you'll see the people moving or, or shifting. He uses the camera to shift, um, to, shift uh, uh, to make the transitions for him rather than physically editing the tra transitions, okay? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna play that and I'll, I'm probably gonna stop or, or kind of uh, point out some things as we go here, okay? Staring out windows, watching my breath fall. Before I was on point with knuckles like that hedgehog Sonic. Used to puff chronic and sip the tonic. In the state of a blue bonnet, when it do get worse than blue bonnet. Play, especially if you stay over there off on par. Way before Jeff pushed that back, the color of cornstarch. We had number one hearts on our. So I'm gonna pause here. So he has he has his own crew of dancers. She is one of these dancers, okay? And so he's He's in this scene, he's setting up the stage in this scene and is slowly panning in. Eventually what's gonna happen is they're gonna set the scene for her team to be around him, okay? Without cutting the camera, without doing anything, you know, editing or anything. And I'm gonna, you're gonna see that uh, in a little while. So they're starting. Camera turns. So right here, watch what happens. They, they use her shirt to transition. Okay, so they zoom in. And when they come out. So she walks away. So now look, they've changed the scene without doing any editing at all. They use what they have to create this. So while we were distracted by her shirt and how close up they were, people were literally moving these chairs and putting everything in place where they needed to be so that when we zoom out, we have this now. Had that dough and powder, no funnel cake. I was with my running mates. We boxed with had the gun in place. My dogs was like Deion Sanders. Right, so that goes, so we're, we're gonna, you can, you can find him on, you know, on YouTube or, or whatever you need to, uh, you can just Google him. But uh, like I said, if you're being creative and you're just thinking about how you need to do things, you don't have to have a lot of fancy stuff to, to, to produce what you want to produce. Um, and that's, that's the main thing I'm trying to get through to you guys. Uh, so one thing, 
here. In the field and run. Let me zoom out of here. So I'm, now I'm going to show you. Um, my video seems to have gone away here. Hold on, give me one second. I'm going to. Okay, so. So one thing we're going to do is if you want to know something, it's most of it is as simple as Googling it or YouTubing it, honestly. I mean, I know you guys know this, but I, I hope you guys know this. Uh, so we're gonna, I'm going to show you a video um, uh, about InShot, which is a free video editing, editing um, software that you can use. You can download it on your phone or you can download it on your computer and you can use it uh, to edit video, okay? And that's one reason why I was showing you all those other things, just because uh, we're gonna watch this video and it's gonna explain to you some things uh, about this software, okay? So- You guys, seven advanced- So let's go, that's the wrong one. It's this one here. What's up, smartphone filmmakers? In today's so, video, I'm going to be- We're gonna go over this video here. On the InShot, video editor, a free version. I'll be covering everything you need to know so that way after this video, you can get right to editing your videos. Now, I'll be doing this tutorial from my iPad, but don't worry, whether you're using an iPhone or an Android device, it's going to be the exact same experience with just a few differences here and there. I just prefer to use the iPad for this tutorial. So to start, we can click the video button and that's gonna open up our media that we can import. I'm going to go down to our video editing tutorial album and I'm going to click on these clips to add them to our timeline. Once I've selected all the clips I want, in the bottom right corner, just click the check mark. That'll load all the clips into your timeline. Now, if for some reason you forgot to add certain video clips into your project, on the far left, you'll see that red plus button. If you click that, you can add more video clips into the timeline, uh, but I've got all the video clips I need so we can just back out there. On a quick side note, you may be wondering why on earth I'm holding a flip phone in all these videos. And that is because I actually did a video uh, where I challenged myself to try and take cinematic photos on nothing but a flip phone. So if you're interested in watching that video, I'll link it down below. But yeah, that's why I'm holding a flip phone in all of these video clips. So if you want to rearrange the clips that you have imported into your timeline, simply hold down on the timeline and they'll turn all the video clips into these boxes that you can actually scroll around and move however you want and rearrange. If you want to trim a clip, simply touch on it. And on either side of the clip, you'll see those bars. Simply grab those and drag, and that'll trim the clip. You can also trim a clip by positioning it wherever you want, then clicking the split button. This will slice the clip into two different clips, and then just delete the other side that you don't want. If for some reason you accidentally make a mistake and you actually didn't want to delete the clip, on the left side there is a back button where you can just click and that'll reverse the mistake that you made. Now if we want to crop a certain clip, we can click on the video and then click canvas. So in here we can change the ratio. So for example, if we want to upload to TikTok, we could change it to that, YouTube, Instagram, etc. But then you can also in here go to zoom you can actually zoom in and crop however you want. There's also some presets down here that you can use. Uh, it's normally for the TikTok setting, but you could do full, uh, bottom, fit, top, uh, all these different settings there. And while in this, if you go actually to background, you can actually change the background to a different color, uh, a gradient, or even a weird emoji, you know, all these different patterns if you really wanna add that. Uh, to your video. Now let's talk about transitions. In between both of these clips, you'll see there's that white button. If you click that, that's going to open up transitions. You have access to quite a few different basic transitions that you can use. Uh, there's also these paid transitions down here, but hey, we're staying with free. So anything on top, the basic transitions, uh, you can add to your video. And we're just going to click check and leave it as that. If you want to add text to your video, just select the clip that you want to add text to, then tap text, and you can start adding text. 
Once your text is set up, you can click the color button to change the color of the text. You can also change the font to whatever you want. And then these white circles is actually transitions. So you can have different transition effects uh, for your text. And you can also uh, change here on this bar how long the effect takes to uh, happen. So this is actually really cool. I actually love that you can have all these different transitions for the text. Now, if you want to add music to your video, obviously just click the music button over here. You can add tracks, effects, or even record your own voiceovers. You'll also see on the left here the sticker icon. If you click on that, there's a few different GIFs here, uh, but you can also go over here and add photos to the video. So for example here, I just added this photo. I can resize it, move it around wherever I want, or even click the X button and make it go away. Up next, let's take a look at adding filters. So to add a filter, just select the clip that you want to add a filter to and then click filters. There's a few options here. So effects is going to give you a few different effects that you can add. Uh, there's some free stuff, but a lot of it is paid. Uh, so we're not going to look at that. And then there's also the main filter area where you can just apply these different effects to your video. And then there's also, when you do that, you can determine how strong that filter is. You can right. align it just right. Right, remember we talked then about if that. if you hop over to adjust, you can really mess with it. You can change the lightness, the contrast, warmth. You really have a lot of control over your video. And this is something a lot of video editors don't have. Now, something else I want to mention, which is the same with a lot of the things here, you'll notice these two check marks on the far left side here. This means you can apply this effect to all the videos. So let's click that, apply to all. And now that color grading effect is applied to all the videos. So instead of having to click on every single video, you can click on those double check marks and it'll apply that effect to everything, which will save you more time. Other than that, everything else is pretty self-explanatory. Delete will delete your clip. Volume's gonna control your volume. Speed controls speed, duplicate, rotate, flip. You know, all those settings are pretty self-explanatory, so I'm not gonna show you those. And that covers our tutorial of the InShot video editor. Thanks for watching. Please give it a like if you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. What's up, smartphone? All right, so, um... So it's pretty easy stuff. Um, get my video back up here. So it's pretty easy stuff, as you guys can see. Um, and the main thing is just, you know, uh, uh, as we're doing this, um, just uh, take your time, be thoughtful, think about all the things that we've talked about. Um, if you ever get stuck, you can always go back and find these tutorials uh, or even just look up Instagram artists, uh, YouTube. Like I said, all I, you saw me, what all I did was type in InShot, uh, I-N-S-H-O-T, uh, video editor tutorial. Just type in InShot and some videos will come up and people will, you know, explain it to you. Um, it's, it's really just that easy. Um, you know, there are people on here who are super, super professionals that use this stuff. Uh, you know, um, and they, they have a lot more advice uh, than I can give you uh, if, you're in, if, if, if you want to. So you have the internet, use it you know, do something with it. Uh, you can learn and do anything you want to with it. Um, so with that, I believe we are done. Uh, I just want to re re reiterate one more time, you know, send all your, um, whenever you're finished with the project to Armory, Armory Learning Arts Center at gmail.com, no spaces. I just did that so you guys could, you know, read it. Uh, and also, so remember this assignment or this project, if you can do five photos, or, or you can do one two minute video, or you could do both if you want to, okay? So five videos and one two minute video, okay? And with that, I think if anyone has any questions or anything that I've shared, or, or, or if, if anyone's confused about anything, just uh, now's your time to ask me any questions uh, if you have any.